The Amazon Studios multi-season drama series The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, created by J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, is set thousands of years before the events of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. During an interview with Collider, Charles Edwards, a.k.a. Celebrimbor, discussed his childhood obsession with this world. What does he think about his obsession? And if so, how much more did he know about his character's past? Let's see. To begin, what does Edwards have to say about The Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power's magnificent costumes and sets? Is it related to an actor's fantasy? Let's find out. Charles Edwards, I understand, and I was captivated by it all as a child. Everyone knows about Peter Jackson films, but I had the animated Ralph Bakshi version from 1978 when I was a kid. That was my whole focus at the moment. So, to return to this world, you step onto a set, and the little nine-year-old in you begins leaping up and down, recalling the thrill you had when you first met Tolkien. Being part of it right now is unique. Moving on, does an actor intend to discover himself or herself where he or she should be, according to Charles? Edwards, no, you can't. Never. As an actor, you can't plan anything. It happened as things often occur. It appeared and I became extremely enthusiastic about it. I had my audition and suddenly I was cast. Of course, because they keep the audition process so private, they give you false character names, so you never know what you're auditioning for. There are several NDAs floating around. With this, I knew it had to be the Lord of the Rings. That was obvious to me, but I believe some others were not. But I had no notion who he was. You can imagine how pleased I was when I eventually got the part and was in informed what it was a couple of weeks later and checked it up. Following that, does Charles have any clue how long his character will last? And if so, what does he have to say about it? Edwards, as I have stated, there is a great deal of concealment. When I discovered the guy, I realized he had a story arc inside Tolkien. Therefore, that is him. But I don't inform others who don't know what happens to him. And those who know him know what happens to him. I'm hoping and assuming that's the general direction we're taking. Next up, what does Charles have to say about the Lord of the Rings Rings of Power set, which is unlike any other he's seen. Edwards, the scale in the settings. My workshop, which is a large set, was the most fulfilling for me. There is room. Because the camera has been made entirely, you don't have to shift it constantly. You don't need to pause, change the camera, and then film that section. You may act out the scene exactly like you would in a play. Because there is enough area for everyone to roam about you, you can perform the scenario from start to finish without interruption. That's incredibly fulfilling because you can play the entire scenario and feel like you did it right. There isn't much chopping and restarting. I spend most most if not all of my time in my workshop doing various things, which has been quite fulfilling. The collaboration aspect is also quite appealing. Sometimes you make a recommendation that isn't a good one. Yeah, okay, let's try it, they sometimes say. There is room for discussion, which is usually a good thing. Moving on, how does Charles feel about customs? And do they stick out to him? Let's find out. Edwards, when Elrond first approaches me, I hold a hammer, which is my grandpa Fanor's. There is a display case in the background of that image, and inside it is many little relics, many of which have some Tolkien in importance. They're hardly visible, but they're there. That demonstrates what a labor of love this has been for so many people at the pinnacle of their profession. The study, thinking, and care that has gone into it from every area stems from a love of Tolkien and a desire to get it precisely right while keeping everyone pleased. That has been the production's defining feature. Next up, what was Charles's experience in filming the first day compared to the end of the season? Edwards, definitely. The first day of any work is always nerve-wracking for me. I believe the majority of people do. All of my scenes were shot after the session. It wasn't my workshop because of the magnitude of the set, but it was a lovely spot called the Hall of Heroes, where all the Elben heroes are carved into the trees. It was with Rob Aramayo, who has been my rock throughout this ordeal, and we conversed quietly. When you enter the scene, it's merely you chatting with someone else. You're simply acting and doing your thing. That's why you're there. Arriving on set with God knows how many people all were staring at the monitor and crowding around is nerve-wracking, but by the end, I had firmly entered my workshop, of which I am the master, and felt very much at home there where I shall continue to toil. Moving on, Morfid Clark has stated that when it comes to Tolkien, it's more about hope over despair than good over evil. What does Charles think of the show and the story's description? Is it appropriate? Edwards, in a broad sense, I believe it is both. It's hope over despair because Tolkien transports us into the realm of existence. He touches on everything, whether human or not, no matter what race you are, which is why he survives like Shakespeare. They are susceptible to the human situation and the conditions of life. Of course, there are big fights, but there are also modest, quiet moments, even home ones, which are pretty poignant and to which we can connect. Hope and despair are more personal concepts, which I believe is appropriate because the tale is personal with all our characters. Following that, do the actors have a right to know the plot of the film? What does Edwards think about this? Edwards clarified that he wasn't sure about the intricacies of rights issues. Even though they didn't have the rights to all of Tolkien's writings, the creators were able to craft a tale set in Middle-earth that was tied to the characters we already knew. This also does not limit people to a single rendition of the narrative 
narrative. After all, Tolkien himself had several versions of his stories. As Edwards points out, there are various things, and as we know, Tolkien had two or three versions of them, such as Celebrimbor's narrative. So, before we began, I pondered which version of him was in love with Galadriel. But you were with Celeborn of the Trees, he pointed out. Celeborn, to give it its full name. Because I loved you, but you chose Celeborn of the Trees, he says to Galadriel. So, that's another whole different series. Next up, superiority of various versions of Celebrimbor's story. However, there are different versions, so none of this implies that one version of the narrative is superior to another. As Weintraub pointed out, the books and the version of the narrative conveyed in them will go on in perpetuity. Edwards concurred, pointing out that Tolkien was aware of the growth of storytelling, and every narrative as we know, like the Brothers Grimm or fairy tales, which Tolkien was intrigued with, alters and evolves slightly depending on the period in which it appears. And as Tolkien put it, whatever his phrase was about new hands taking up my task, it was true, and it will indeed shift. And there are things, according to the rights issues, if they had the rights to the Silmarillion, they would produce the Silmarillion, but it's not like that. As a result, it is both unavoidable and pleasant. Finally, is Rings of Power an exact version of other J.R.R. Tolkien tales? While the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit films are adaptations of certain writings by J.R.R. Tolkien, the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power is not. Though it is deeply rooted in Tolkien's world and literature, it is not a direct adaptation of his novels. Instead, pulling themes across his writings to create an engaging new tale. With the date of the plot and the existence of characters such as Celebrimbor, it is easy for fans to believe that the series is a loose adaptation of books such as The Silmarillion. In terms of researching and preparing for the job, actor Charles Edwards told Collider's Steve Weintraub during an interview that he didn't put too much stock in any text. But with this, there was a balance of, yeah, well, because we didn't have any scripts, and I knew there were copyright concerns and such. So, you say, well, but if I read too much, like The Silmarillion, they won't be able to accomplish that, and I'll be dissatisfied. But so far, everything has gone according to plan. As I type this, I'm touching wood, and my research has been extensive. Surely thorough enough to talk about, but not thorough enough to continue learning. Charles reached a conclusion. Well, that marks the end of our video for today. We hope you enjoyed it. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.